and welcome to my first ever Tackle Talk or Tutorial video of 2019 Basic Fishing. Recently I've been doing a lot of jigging and um, I've been enjoying it a lot. So for today's video I want to show you everybody you know, my the basic ways on how to get started on jigging. Now I've only done this a few times so I'm no expert but I've learned a thing or two you know through jigging so I like to show everyone the basic guideline on how to get started on jigging particularly um, what gear you need so what is jigging? a lot of people get confused by the term jigging well basically speaking jigging is um, lure fishing except you know instead of working your lure horizontally you know you're casting out far letting it sink or working it up and down you are dropping your lure vertically all the way down about between 50 or 100 meters of water and then you're working it up erratically through the water columns hoping that a big fish will have a slam at the lure. Now in order to get started on jigging I highly recommend you know getting started on getting, getting into um, charter fishing especially ones who do um, jigging a lot. But enough of that because today we will be talking about the gears. So this is the rod that I use. It's I really like this rod. It's very cheap for you know compared to most other high grade um, rods out there. But I found this rod to be very grunty and very powerful. And you know, not to mention it was able to withstand a lot of brute force from a lot of kingfish. So this rod is quite short, unlike you know most typical rods, which are up to six or seven feet. But the reason why it's short is because you know when you're dropping your lure vertically down, you know you want to make sure you have um, enough leverage so that you know you're putting more damage on the fish. But also another problem with long rods is that you get a high, you get a risk of getting high stick. And high sticking is when you lift your rod high and then you know that rod is bending and oh man. It feels like a rod's gonna break, whereas if, if you fight your fish like this, you know, you're gonna put more hurt on the fish itself. Now this is a spinning reel, as you can see the guides are humongous and they're widely spread out and you know I recommend most people to start with um spinning outfits. As you can see, big guides, very strong too. Another thing I like to point out is that this rod um the lure weight ratio um, recommendation is between 200 and 350 grams and this is ideal to use especially for beginners whereas you know if you use um, a more deep water type of um, jigs you need to get a rod which is rated between 300 and 600 grams and that is more for an advanced you know, type of jig whereas this it's more suitable for you know beginners who are you know, keen on just trying out jigging for the first time now this is the reel I use. Now as you can see, this is not this is not like a typical um, like, a, not like a typical spinning reel, like a surf casting reel or like a soft bait type of reel. As you can see, it's pretty big, and um, I like this reel because it, one, it has a really good drag and um, yeah, very good drag, and I can just crank this up until I can. Um, oh gee. Uh, uh, gee, that's hot. And yeah, having a good drag on a reel is important because the last thing you want is a sticky drag, and a sticky drag uh, it can often compromise. You know, it can it can lead to compromise. Now, another thing I like to mention about this reel is that it's a deep spool reel, meaning that it holds a lot of line, but the spool is um, just put it. You can see. And what this usually means is that the shaft is quite shorter, meaning that it can withstand more abuse. Now this reel, it's made of metal, so this is a very, very sturdy reel. Uh, the only problem is it's super heavy to um, work your jig with, especially speed jigging. And oh man, I tried speed jigging with this and seriously it completely destroyed my arm. But you know, in saying that for its price, I think this is a really good reel to get. 
especially for jigging or stick picking. Now um, for braid, I'll just take the rubber band off. So I'll just um, oh, I'll just um, take this line out and just show you the braid that I am using. And as you can see, that's the braid right here. And the reason why we we use braid is that braid has no stretch, as you can see. And having no stretch means that you can work your lure more uh, effectively, whereas mono, it has a tendency to um <laughs> to stretch, if you can hear that. Of course, you still need a mono to in order to add like a shock leader, so that you know when the kingy slams at the jig, you know, the mono won't take the full force of it, and that this mono, uh, the braid won't take full force of it and the mono can act like a shock absorber. Now I'm using 50 pound braid and um, the reason that I use, well, the reason that I got a 50 pound braid is that I actually intended to use this gear as a stick baiting setup. Uh, you know, I never got a chance to do any stick baiting because it's too damn difficult. And instead I've been using this for jigging and I have considered upgrading the braid to 80 pound. Now another important factor is choosing the correct knot for um, braid to mono and as you can see that is an FG knot and what you can see here at, at, uh, down at the end is that I've added a, a mushroom effect to prevent that slipping off although you know you don't have to do this because you know I've done this without the mushroom effect and it worked just as fine now the reason why I recommend you know using very very strong mono to braid knots is that the kingies they will not give you a chance and you know they will try and bust you off in any way possible. Another recommended knot and this is the most specialized type of knot for jigging is the PR knot but again you need a bobbin for that and um, most good bobbins especially are quite they are expensive so an FG knot is more recommended although you know, if you're seasick and you can't tie a knot on the boat, then the back to back uni knot is probably the last, um, like the last minute resort that you need to um, use, you know, just in case you want to tie a knot fast <clears throat> you know, during when the biting is hot, or if you're just too seasick to even tie the, tie the knot. Now, I did mention that I used um, mono on this, and um, this is a mono that I like to use. In fact, for 50 pounds, I like to use 80 pound, um, 80 pound um, mono. Whereas, you know, if I'm using 80 pound braid, I will switch it up to 100 pound. Now, the reason why I like to use the mono is it sits a lot better on the reel, meaning that it won't unravel like a spring. Whereas fluorocarbon has a tendency to do that, and it's also um, quite, as you can see, it's quite softer and easier to tie with as well. And, and as you can also see, it retains that memory. Um, I don't know the exact term, but if it's sitting on a spool, it will retain that memory, meaning that it will sit better on the spool. Yeah. The last thing that you want is your line just unspring all over the place and causing a mess. This is the main stuff that you really want for um, jigging and as you can see I got myself these gun jigs. Now um I like these slim jigs because again I as I mentioned in some of my videos they drop through the water column really fast and it has a good erratic movement so that you know it will move upwards like that and if I leave it to if I um, while I'm working I like to pause my retreat and you know let it flutter it has a good flutter action as well you know during the retreat another cool thing about this is that it has a luma belly as well not to mention a strong hook you can see this one has um, a protective <clears throat> it has a protective um, shrink tube on it and that's really handy especially when you want to protect the Kevlar against toothy predators such as Barracuda or just prevent getting the Kevlar damaged in total because Kingfish 
they do have quite abrasive mouths, and um, I had my fair share of damage from them when I was handling them too. Oh, and um, let's not forget this knife joke. Again, very different, very different action. I haven't used this yet, but I'm looking forward to using this. But I have used something similar, and you know, because of its broad design, it will flutter and it will do another tree flutter as well. Yeah. So the knot I like to use for the um, the solid ring is a simple uni knot. Just yeah, getting it through. Hold it tight here, make a loop, and I just um, put the tag three times here. Pull it very tight, I like to use my mouth. And I uh, pull it as hard as I can, so that, you know, I won't regret it. The main line is actually in direct contact with the assist hook, so that, you know, I am fighting the fish directly like this. So that, and the fish, can't use the jig to his advantage. You know, cause sometimes, cause um... One thing that actually happens a lot, especially when spinning for kawai, is that often the hook is at the end and the kawai can use the weight of the jig to their advantage and it can, um, you know, help it to unhook itself. Whereas the jig, no matter how hard the kidney is, um, shaking or fighting against it, it won't be able to, um, use a jig to his advantage. And another benefit of having, you know, tying this to the, um, the assist hook is that, you know, you can grab the jig and pull the fish up. Although, it doesn't always work like that. <laughs> Bruce! What have you done?! <laughs> but uh, when it does, it's quite easy and efficient. And another reason why people, uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking <laughs> why why um, Bruce didn't exactly grab the jig itself, why, why Bruce grabbed the jig itself and not the tail and so well, the reason is that, you know, when you have an angry kingfish bashing all over the place, you don't want this to hit you anywhere or fly off and hit someone, because that's going to hurt a lot. Now this is kind of new for me as well, but the reason I actually attached the swivel here is that um, when, it's when, when I retrieve the jig, it will often spin around, and I don't want to create any more line twists. I mean, honestly speaking, it's still in contact with the jig. It's just, um, yeah. I'm interested on how this will go. You know, I'm always hoping for the best. Ah, and another thing I like to add on my assist hook are these luminescent um, squid skirts because um, often they always make a difference, especially in deeper waters. And usually I like to add luminescent um, colors, but if I, I do have um, other match other colors, so depending on the situation, I would use them to match the, um, the jig. So as you can see, green for the jig green, and pink for the pink. So, yeah. Well, I would change the assist hook on this, but... <laughs> but yeah, the squid squid always seems to make a difference or two. So my most favorite color to use, uh, the blue jig, is the blue. I always find the blue to be the most general color. Although, silver is also another good color to use as well. Especially on bright sunny day because, you know, that will flash a mile away. And um, yeah, with jigs, as I mentioned, you can catch kingfish, but you can catch so many other species on these from where do I start? Like, like the possibility of hooking onto a half hooker is also quite high. Scorpion fish, even a regular snapper. But let's not forget the um, the, the golden snapper, which are really good eating, and also the humble cow, which are always you know always like to chase on a jig bigger than themselves. So this is my basic setup, and this is what I like to use whenever I have a chance to go out jigging. And I hope everyone enjoyed watching this video. And if you have, please leave a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe for more fishing videos. And if you have any more questions, you know, comment below and I'll ask them if I can. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed watching this video and thank you for watching and see you guys next time.